You're right, Peck. These modern baked enamels have got it all over the paints they had when I started to paint. And they last longer, dry faster, besides coming in a lot more colors than the old paints. Right, Tex. We've come a long ways from the days we had just earth pigment finishes to work with. Sure, we still use some earth pigments, but for modern baked enamels, most of the pigments come right out of the chemist's test tube. Break it up, you guys. You sound like a couple of paint salesmen. If this baked enamel's so good, how come this job I'm working on don't look so hot? Just take a look at this finish here. I'm from Missouri. You're going to have to show me that this isn't a case of paint failure. Barney, me boy, that's what us paint men call chalking. Why don't you tell them about it, Pop? Well, <laughs> we've run into chalking ever since we started painting automobiles, Barney. It's just a normal oxidizing of the surface of the paint and actually looks like colored or white chalk. Looks to me like poor paint. Not at all, Barney. You wouldn't say that the set of silver you bought your wife last year was poor silver, would you, just because it tarnishes? Chalking the paint is just as harmless as tarnishing of silver. I get the point, Pop, but how come you find chalking on one paint job and not on another car of the same model and color? You'll probably find by talking with the owners that the car that's chalking has been standing outside. Strong sunlight is one of the main causes of chalking. Keeping the finish clean will keep chalking from building up, Barney. Sure, Tech. And you can recognize this chalking condition by a slight dulling of the finish. And if you rub the surface with a dry cloth, you'll see traces of color on the cloth. I get it, Pop. But what can you do about getting rid of this chalking? Wash the car first, then polish the surface with good liquid polish. Sometimes the chalking will be too bad, and you'll have to use a paste cleaner, or even refinish the job, so don't let it build up. Is that the only condition that causes dulling of the surface prop? No, not by a long shot, Barney. The use of strong soaps, caustic cleaners, and inferior polishes will do it, too. You better tell Barney here why you want to wait at least 90 days before you polish or apply any coating to a new car, Pop. That's a good idea, Tech. There's a very good reason for it, too. That paint is baked on at the factory, but you got to let the paint cure so each coat will get thoroughly dry and hard right down to the metal. If you put polish on the surface, you shut off the air and don't give the undercoats a chance to harden. Also... A buffing wheel can cut tiny scratches in the enamel film. This may cause early failure and bring about a dulling of the finish. So to be safe, you better wait at least 90 days before you apply anything but clear, cold water to the finish of a new car. You want to remember that enamel already has a good protective surface, so why not take advantage of that hard, glossy surface rather than taking a chance of rubbing it off? Right you are, Tech. Actually, there's a lot to a good paint job that doesn't meet the eye when you look at a shiny new car, Barney. Now, let's start at the beginning and see just what is behind a good paint job. First, the metal is treated with a protective coating to retard the spread of rust. Over this goes a primer coat that fills in the little depressions in the metal and gives a smooth surface for the sealer and color coats to stick to. Next comes the sealer coat. It seals the primer so the color coat won't soak in and cause a dull finish. Then comes the finish or color coat. What do you have to watch for in a repaint job, Pop? Well, in the first place, material is mighty important. A poor grade of enamel or lacquer leads you into all kinds of trouble, Barney. A dulling of the surface, just to mention one. It pays to use the best. Right, Pop. You get out of a paint job just what you put into it. Say, I might mention bronzing right here. You'll find this condition in some deep blues and a few other colors. It's a kind of chalking which forms crystals that give a bronze tone when seen at an angle. Actually, it's a surface condition that rubs off easily with a liquid polish. What about these blisters on the fender, Pop? What causes them? <laughs> ah, that's a big order, Barney. There are a lot of things that can cause blistering. Now, let's take them one at a time. Pimpling and blistering are more apt to show up in parts of the country that have high temperatures and high humidity. After all, uh, no paint film is entirely free from attack by moisture. And you want to remember, Barney, 
Too much polishing with an abrasive cleaner can make the paint finish so thin, moisture will get in and cause blistering. That's right, Tech. And remember, there are many outside conditions that may be harmful to an auto paint. For example, gases, soot, and all kinds of solid material and chemicals that are thrown into the air around manufacturing plants and settle on the paint. What about you painters, Pop? Don't you ever make mistakes that result in blistering? <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, Barney, but sometimes we do. Uh, hold on a minute, and I'll dig up some panels I got in the paint booth. Say, you know, the more I talk to you and Pop, the more I realize you got to know your stuff to diagnose a paint condition. <laughs> You're right. When Pop gets through with you, you'll know a lot more about paint than you do now, my boy. Here we are. Now, uh, take a look at this panel. This is a good example of blistering. Yeah. But how can you tell what causes it, Pop? Is it the fault of the painter or some outside cause? Well, Barney, this blistering was caused by rust under the surface. And that's because the painter didn't do a good job of getting all the rust off the metal before he started painting. That's probably right. A painter can help prevent this undersurface rusting by cleaning the metal with rust remover before spraying on the primer coat. Right, Pop. That liquid rust remover gets into the pores of the metal and makes it chemically clean and rust-free. It also retards the spreading of rust in case the paint is scratched off down to the metal. If you break a blister and find rust under it, there's only one thing to do. Strip down to the metal and repaint. Right, Pop. But remember, some undercoats look like rust, so examine the surface close-like to be sure it is rust before you strip the paint off. And a painter wants to remember to keep his airlines free from oil and water. Nothing will make blisters quicker than that. Say, Pop, take a look at this peeling along the fender. What causes it? Peeling means the paint isn't sticking. You can see that this fender has been repainted. Maybe it wasn't cleaned properly before it was sprayed. Peeling can take place between the finished coat and the sealer, or the primer surfacer, or... The entire film may lift off, right down to the bare metal. That's what we call poor adhesion. The only cure for peeling is to sand the affected area and refinish. Right, Pop. No halfway measures will work here. Say, what do you know about these new polishes that contain silicone? Silicone, Barney, is a material added to some polishes to make them easier to put on. It does a good job as far as the polish is concerned, but... You got to be sure to get all that polish off before you start to repaint a job. If you don't get all that silicone off before you start to repaint, you get a fisheye effect to the finish. And you can tell if the owner's been using this silicone polish by cleaning and spraying a small spot. Them fisheyes will pop out right away if he has. Right, Tech. And if you do find signs of silicone, wash the area to be painted using clean rags and a special silicone removing solution. Then, while the surface is still wet, switch to dry, clean rags and wipe until it is dry. And throw the rags in a special can so you won't use them for cleaning other surfaces you're getting ready to paint. That's a good point, Tech. And if you have to sand the surface, it's better to wet sand it. That keeps down dust containing silicone, which might get on another paint job standing nearby and ruin it. Then wash the surface again with the silicone removing solution and dry it with clean rags. And remember, never use those rags in the paint shop again. Say, that silicone story is a good one to remember. <laughs> you paint guys do have to know your stuff to turn out a good paint job. Well, one of you guys better turn the record over so Pop can give us the rest of the paint story. We ain't said nothing about surface spotting yet, Pop. That's something most of us can nip right in the bud, especially with our own car. You got something there, Tech. And let's start right out with the most likely one, water spotting. Water spotting usually results from washing a car in the hot sun. Drops of water are just like a magnifying glass. They'll burn the paint finish. Say, I never thought about that. Is there any way to get rid of those spots? Oh, polishing the surface with a mild combination cleaner and polish will usually do it. Another form of spotting you'll run into, mostly in the wintertime, is antifreeze spotting. And watch them service station boys. Some of them are pretty careless. <laughs> well, maybe you got something there, Tick. You'll find those bleached out spots usually on the fenders, right close to the radiator, 
come from drops of antifreeze. But they don't come out as easy as water spotting. You may have to sand down alcohol spots and refinish. Especially if it's a lacquer job. Them enamel finishes don't spot so easy. Hey, stop it. You two guys are going to have me putting a blanket over my paint job when I take my car out of the garage. Are there any more things to look out for? <laughs> things aren't as bad as they sound, Barney. You want to remember, paints nowadays are pretty tough. Most of these complaints develop when the paint job is neglected. But even during normal driving, you run into conditions that are liable to have an effect on your car's paint job. For example, driving in the country on dirt or graveled roads, alkali dust is apt to collect on the paint, and that may spot the finish. Mud spots from soil carrying a high degree of this alkali can be removed, in part at least, by proper cleaning methods, followed by exposure to the sunlight. Even parking under trees in front of your own house has its hazards, me boy. <laughs> you got something there, Tech. These tree sap and bug spots, as well as bird droppings, can usually be removed with a good combination cleaner and polish. If that doesn't work, you'll have to refinish the spot. You can get off oil or tire spots with a recommended tire remover. Salt should be washed off your car right away, too. If it gets into any breaks in the paint film, it'll start corrosion. How about mentioning bruising and chipping, Pop? Good idea, Tech. Stones that bounce up and hit the paint are apt to bruise or chip the paint. Careless handling of your car can put little nicks and chips in the finish, too. If you don't touch them spots up right away, they'll start to rust. Hunting and fishing trips are apt to result in scratches picked up from tree branches while driving on narrow roads through thick woods. Right, Pop. And ropes used to tie on hunting or camping equipment don't help to paint any either. Say, Pop, I was looking at this car during lunch hour. What causes this kind of finish? Now, that's what we painters call orange peel, Barney. That's because the dented effect on the paint film resembles the skin of an orange. You'll find this orange peel present to some extent in all sprayed finishes. Normal cleaning and polishing operations combined with age will cause the condition to gradually disappear. Yeah, I know, but what causes it? Well, it could be from a number of different causes. On repaint jobs, the most common cause is use of the wrong kind of thinner. Or... It could be caused by not using enough thinner. The amount of air pressure on the gun compared with the amount of paint being sprayed can cause it, too. Well, I gotta admit that a bad case of orange peel is the fault of the painter. But it's awfully hard to stay away from. His thinner can dry too quick. His spray gun can plug up for a moment. Temperature can change. He can... Well, <laughs> that gives you an idea of how easy it is to get off the beam. Yeah, I guess a painter does have to know his business to put out a good paint job. Right, Barney. But just knowing how ain't enough. He's got to practice what he knows every minute he's working on a paint job. You're both right about a painter having to be on the ball all the time when he's got a spray gun in his hand. Now, take a look at this panel here, for example. This is what we call wrinkling. Say, I've noticed that condition. What causes it? Well, in nearly every case, you can blame it on the application of a very heavy coat. The best precaution against wrinkling is for the painter to cover the surface thoroughly, but try not to build up too heavy a coat all in one operation. Another important point is to thin the paint according to the directions on the can. The selection of the right thinner is mighty important, too. For instance, the use of a fast thinner in warm weather will result in a very heavy coat, which will surface dry too quick and cause wrinkling. Right, Pop. And not enough thinner will do the same thing. On hot days, when the humidity is high, the paint surface will dry faster than the paint underneath. That'll cause wrinkling, too. It's times like that a painter really needs to know his thinners. On hot days and hot humid days, he should use a slow thinner. I got another question that's been bothering me, Pop. What about dust in the finish? Seeing as how this paint don't dry instantly, isn't there bound to be some dust settle on the paint? That's a good question, Barney. And you're right about dust. These new synthetic enamels take from 15 to 30 minutes to surface dry, dust-free. Right, Pop. But with a good paint booth, you don't have to worry much about dust. 
If you're using a lacquer, you can rub out the dust during the rubbing and polishing operations. A good point, Tech. With these synthetic enamels, you better wait at least 48 hours before you try to rub out dust. And it's better to wait several weeks if the customers will go for it. To rub the dust out of an enamel job, flush off the surface with water to remove any abrasive particles. And then use a good synthetic rubbing compound followed with a liquid polish. And be sure you don't use lacquer rubbing compound on enamel. It's too abrasive. Oh, say, here's a condition on this panel we haven't mentioned. Uh, checking and cracking. Right. And you'll find that quite a lot on repainted jobs. Yeah, I have noticed this condition. It must have something to do with poor mixing, eh? He's learning, Pop. Maybe you can make a painter out of him, huh? Maybe so, Tech. It's hard to put your finger on the cause of cracking and checking. Now, take these line cracks, for example. Simple line cracks usually result from temperature changes or from coating over undried paint. Usually, cracks or checks are irregular lines, while scratches from tree branches or from wiping with a dry rag usually form a regular pattern. Not stirring the paint enough to get it thoroughly mixed can cause cracking and checking, too. That's a good point, Tech. Remember, if you've got actual cracking or checking, you've got to strip off all the paint and start from scratch. That about covers paint failures, Barney. Think you can recognize them now? You bet. You know, my wife always says I'm too nosy for my own good. <laughs> Wait till I tell her what I learned today by being nosy. And now I gotta shove off. But I'd like to leave this thought with you. We all aren't painters, but we should know enough about paint to talk intelligently to our customers. And remember this. All painted surfaces weather with time. But you can make them last longer if you will wash enamel finishes with clean cold water. Clean off salt, tar, and other matter quickly. And touch up damaged spots to keep rust from spreading. Thank you.